Then we turned back and set out toward the wilderness along the route to the Red Sea, as the Lord had directed me. For a long time we made our way around the hill country of Sur. Then the Lord said to me, You have made your way around this hill country long enough. Now turn north. We all take out insurance that covers us in strife and leave the most important thing that's called eternal life. We never seem to stop and think that Jesus Christ can save. Insurance that he paid in full, that's why his life he gave. The very moment you believe you're entered on the roll, then you'll receive a policy that Christ can save your soul. To die without insurance, to never know the cost, where words of hope and comfort are wasted on the lost. I've been to many funerals where words of hope are flowing, but without Christ we surely know just where the soul is going. In the hope of resurrection, be sure you're saved from sin. Christ is life insurance when you believe in him. We cover our possessions that we use every day. Possessions seem to always last. It's we that fade away. I wonder if you are ready. I wonder if you are prepared. A new year has begun and this means you have the opportunity of no longer to be stuck in the old one. Something brand new. I don't know about you, I don't make New Year's resolutions. I can't keep them. I just don't have a self-discipline. But at least I can say to the Lord, I'm going to try to be closer to you this year. I hope that you won't be stuck in the old year or in the past. That you allow yourself to escape and you no longer have to relive all past glories or past successes. I hope that you haven't become comfortable with the desert of your recent past while perhaps it's kept you fed and watered. It's not really given you anything to allow you to grow, to reach your full potential. And this is what was happening with those Israelites. I hope you haven't become just like them. Trudging around the same mountain, going through the same desert land, the same plot of land. That means that you're perhaps expecting the same old problems, that you perhaps you're washing in the same old stale blessings and you expect nothing new or different. A new year, a new opportunity. Perhaps you feel that the sand is stuck in your sandals, it's between your toes. It's in your garments, just as it was for them, and in your hair. And you're not expecting anything to be different. You believe that the experience perhaps you receive from God is going to be the same as it has always been. And perhaps you don't deserve anything else. You've been trudging around the same mountain, the same piece of land, this desert place for tens of years and nothing has really changed and it seems that there's nothing new on the horizon. The people of Israel have been wandering in the desert near Sir for almost 40 years. While God had rescued them from the hands of Satan, the Pharaoh, and while God had kept them safe from the enemies because he parted the Red Sea and he crushed those who tried to entrap them, and while they experienced miracles each day, for they were led by a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night, and they received their daily bread and meat, they were always thinking, what about that promised land? What about that promised land? God was at work amongst them. He was ensuring they would be ready for what was to come for his people, his children at this point had spent 400 years in captivity and almost 40 years in the desert. I don't think God wanted his children, his instruments for the world to be wandering around aimlessly. If that was true for them, what about you? 
Do you feel, as a person, as an individual, as a church, that you have been walking around, to represent the mountain, by the way, and uh, walking around the same mountain, the same land all the time, and nothing is changing? Nothing is changing. Do you feel that you're trudging the same path? Do you feel that you've not moved or got anywhere? Well, perhaps you've received some blessings. What about the promises that God has for you? While you perhaps know the layout of the land, while you know every location, every tree, every bush, every blade of grass, every hill, nothing is new. But you've been promised more. Has that materialised in your life? Or do you feel perhaps it never will? Do you question yourself? Do you ask, surely there must be more to my existence than this? Surely there must be more. I've been trudging around the same piece of ground, going through the same things all the time. There has to be something more. Just like those Israelites have been for almost 30 years, 40 years. Is your mind and body and soul crying out to God? God, there must be something more. There must be something more for me. God, you have to do something. If not for this town, then what about for me? When the Israelites were set free from captivity, the walk to the promised land really was a very short one. From Egypt to Canaan, it was about 100 kilometres, 63 miles, approximately the same distance from here to Carmarthen, no distance at all, at all. A few days' march, yet the people of Israel were spending 40 years in the wilderness, 40 years. You know, it's equivalent of walking one and a half miles a year to get to your destination. It's madness. But they brought it upon themselves because of their hard-heartedness, because of their institutionalism in Egypt. They were stuck in the way of living in Egypt, which was sin. God had to remove that way of living, that way of thinking. He had to remove their mindsets. And that's why they were stuck wandering around in the wilderness trudging around the same place, going over the same things, until a whole generation had to die, and those who were left would think in a different way, believe in God, being more positive in their outlook, the fact that God could do great things. I always find it amazing, and trying to have that turn of Kyle during the day, turn at night, and they would supply with all their bread in the morning manner, and they would pray at night. It's funny how we become so complacent when God is amongst us, when He wants to do great things. And rather than be grateful, they moaned. They moaned. You ever spent some time in Bible study going through Deuteronomy and uh, the Exodus? You see these people moaning to God all the time. Rather than God said, Let me bless you, let me encourage you, but stop thinking in the past. If you want water, if you want bread, if you want me, I will provide it for you. I won't let you go hungry. You don't have to go hungry. You're my people. I love you. And it's the same for us. The Lord Jesus Christ came into the world. Not to allow us to die and suffer and to shrink. Rather, he desires to encourage and bless. And empower you as people and provide you blessings. Since I became a Christian in 1993, I've always been involved in prayer meetings where people have been praying for revival. I think people don't realise that revival is amongst us. The Lord Jesus Christ is amongst us. I pray about that right from the beginning of the service. And he's here to empower you to do great things. But do you believe? Do you have the encouragement? How on earth can I do great things? How on earth could I do great things? I don't know about you when I wander around our town centres. What do I see most of the time? You know, a smile would be a great thing. A blessing.
seen it. How is it? The people were hard hearted. They become institutionalized by Egypt. God desired his people to be delivered, but their hearts had to be melted. What about you this morning, this day, this year to come? He delivered his people. Have you been delivered? Yes, Chris. Okay, that's good. But what was the cost for God? And did you recognize that cost? What did God have to go through to move you where you are, where you are today? What did he have to do? What doors had to be opened? What yokes did he free from you that once hung around your necks? What generational curses did he remove from your lives? And has he patched up your life so you're something wonderful and unique and fantastic to look at? Or is it that you become comfortable with where you are? Have you considered that God has rescued you? So you no longer have to trudge around the same old stuff year on year. It's tough to be half-habits, don't we? We like to go do the same things. We like to be stuck because we get comfortable. We know what's going to happen. We very rarely decide to shake ourselves up to change who and what we are. But our God, you see, doesn't, while he provides us with information, he wants transformation. He wants to take you as individuals and as a people and change us. The world can recognize. Can grasp all God? I wonder if you really understand your potential. Like those Israelites, they would understand their potential of what God can do through and with you. The blessing that you can be if you have the courage if you want to reach out to God in that way he desires to transform your life so that which was familiar becomes unfamiliar that was comfortable becomes uncomfortable so you're no longer on automatic as you enter the doors of your Christianity God is saying to you this day and if you're stuck like this the Lord has said to me this is the words in God's word The Lord said to me, you have made your way around this hill country long enough. Now turn north to change your direction. It's time that you as individuals, as a fellowship and as a church, that your current experiences have run their courses. It's enough. It's time for you to put down your old way of doing things, your old way of thinking, your old way of life, and stop trudging around the old things and embrace the new of God so that he can transform you. God saying, enough is enough. And it's time. You have made your way around this hill country long enough. Now turn north. But do you want to turn north? Do you want to turn north to the promised land? It's not that far away. It's just over the horizon. Have you had enough of the old way? I don't know about you, but I get fed up with the same things. I turn to God and say, Lord, you've got to do something more in my life. I get fed up with the same things. I need a new revelation from your word. You've got to speak to me in a different way. I need you to be something new and empowering in my life. Otherwise, what's the point? Because it's a relationship and relationships have to grow or they become stale and the spontaneity that should be there is lost. God is saying enough is enough. It's time for you to turn north. The promised land is just over horizon this day. 
Ask yourself, why are you here? Have you come to change, to be empowered, to be transformed, to be renewed? Or have you come because it's just what you do? Perhaps you've come to receive a little bit of God's power, just enough to get you through another week. Or do you have the expectation, I know this is my expectation, to be tra- totally transformed by your experience so that as you leave this place today, you are a new creation again. So as you leave, you're full of power, grace, life and love and peace. You're a blessing. So as everyone approaches you, it comes out. Do that for you. You see, the world is full of darkness. It's full of death, loneliness and despair. And as Christians, these concepts, as you know, are totally alien to us. For we, you are God's creation. You are his family. You are his kindred and children. And he desires you to stop your wandering so that you would go north and enter the promised land. What's holding you? What's keeping you where you are? If you come just to receive information this day, I'll be transformed. And in this transformation, are you able to turn north and escape from the same life you always had? So you can leave behind all the discouragement all the lack of support, all the depression, all the illness and life, and rather embrace what Lord Jesus Christ desires to give you. You see, the devil hopes that you just come to church and do the basics. And while perhaps you're giving a little boost to yourself for the week, when you go home, you're the same as you always have been. That your life and life that you're currently living will have minimal impact because nothing is changing. You know, the devil is a liar. He doesn't realize who, well, he sees who and what you are, but he doesn't realize your potential of what you are in Christ. How you can transform this world and he's terrified the fact that you may be totally transformed And then transform the world that is around you. This year, 2023, God is saying to you, you can be a person of light and life. And you can change everything and everyone around you if you so desire, if you trust him, if you believe on him. And if you accept the power that he desires to put in your life. You can be a power amongst your family and friends. And you can say, look what God is doing. This day, this week, this month, this year, 2023, are you willing to say to yourself, I am being transformed and I will be an agent of transformation. I've drawn a line in the sand and I've stepped over it and said, I'm not going back there. Rather than going forward, north to the promised land. To the promised land. So that I will become the Lord Jesus Christ agent of light and love and peace. I'm no longer going to be going visiting the old way of life and land that I once inhabited. But instead I'm entering the promised land and I desire all the blessing that land has to give and that is coming from God and more. You say to me sometimes, well, how can you ask God of these things, Chris? Well, just read what it says in the New Testament. When the disciples didn't have the faith, what did they do? 
They were not Christ's sake. The Lord gave a small face. When they need something, they cry out to God. And if you need something, cry out to Him. He won't abandon you. He won't leave you. But do you want this transformation? Do you want to leave this place this day so everything around you will change because you have been changed and that you start to realise your potential? You have been found. You have been redeemed. You have the love, peace and power of God in your life if you so desire it. And nothing can stand before you because you are the Lord Jesus Christ. And nobody else is. Let's pray. If you wish your desire for your life to be transformed, for you to start taking those steps to move into the north, behind me and be different. I'm praying the same for myself as you right now.